So I am in the process of disassembling my uh, LIFO 4 Powerwall off this rack. This rack is great, um, it's served its purpose very well, but um, I do find myself, it's, I do find it sort of in the way when I try and walk around my, my classic car here. I, par I, I park my classic car right next to this and this kind of ends up blocking the, uh, you know, the access to walk around my classic car. So I have decided to relocate this um, this power wall onto these shelves over here. I have these nice industrial shelves and I had extra space on this bottom shelf and I've just decided to sort of rework the battery down here. And so I'm in the middle of moving the batteries over to this, um, this uh, shelf down here. I put an extra piece of thin ply um, to add a little more support to this because you know we're about to add you know 200 pounds to this um, and uh, to give a little more support and it is nice and smooth and laminated um, which will help protect the bottom of the batteries and um, so I'm starting to stack them over here I am going to have to figure out a compression system um, because it's not going to be in the rack anymore so I can't you know use the use it physically compress the batteries like I did in the rack with a with a bolt system um, but I'm I think I'm gonna ratchet strap these I have an extra ratchet strap that I originally bought as a possible way of of compressing these and I think I'm gonna sort of see how it works um, I'm going to you know get all the batteries in place put a ratchet strap around put some pressure on it, and just see how it see if I'm happy with it I, I did put an extra piece of wood sort of as a spacer between the batteries um, so um, yeah, I'm gonna keep moving these batteries over into this rack here, and then I'm gonna you know try the ratchet strap and see if I'm happy with that. I was considering tape as well, um, and I can tape it, um, but it's very tight in this corner, and I can't really um, like tape the batteries uh, outside of this the shelf and then put them on the shelf just because they're too heavy. I kind of need everything in place when I start to either tape the batteries or ratchet strap the batteries. So tape is going to be very tight to get in around the batteries and put compression with some tape so I'm thinking ratchet strap at this moment so anyways let me uh, keep putting these batteries on here and then we'll start to reassemble and then I'm probably gonna like mount a board or something on the wall here and put the inverters and the monitors and everything up on here um, so I'll have that easy access to the solar charge controller and the inverter and stuff up on this wall here and then the batteries will live down here on the shelf. So that's the initial plan. Okay, so I have the batteries situated the way I want them. I ended up actually putting a much larger piece of particle board here because this board, the shelf actually had a bit of a bit of a curve and you can actually see the gap under there. Um, but this thick piece of particle board is taking the weight happily and keeping it nice and straight and the batteries are all nice and level and I've ratchet strapped them together um, I have, I have uh, insulated I have insulators between each battery these wooden end caps um, overall I'm pr actually now pretty happy with how the um, how the strapping and the batteries have fitted and then I've mounted a board at the back here and that board is where the BMS balance wires other stuff will go keep, keep all the wiring nice and contained in here and then we'll only on the wall have you know the inverter and maybe the solar charge controller but 90 percent of all the mess will be sort of contained under here the bms fuse shunt all that stuff can go under here and then um, um we'll go from there so i think next up i got to put um all the uh, bus bars on and um, slowly start to uh, attach the balance wires and go from there Okay, so I have the basics of everything put back together. All the all the connections are done, and you can see at the back there I have a a loop of six gauge wire joining the left pack and the right pack. This is a 8s 2p pack, so there are two in parallel and then four in series, two in parallel and four in series. So this is a 24 volt pack. It's all rewired. The BMS is attached goes up to the fuse and then I haven't done any more wiring from there but we can I am ready to just check that I have um, voltage and, and all the all the um, balance wires are on the right 
connections and I'll do that by plugging in my SDT here uh, into this extra and it says 26.7 volts and 3.34 on every single pack don't know if you can see that but those are some beautifully balanced cells and I just took that apart from my previous um, out of my previous power wall so the BMS in my previous power wall was doing a good job of keeping everything in balance but um, um, yeah so it looks like all our balance leads are on the right uh, connections and uh, we are good to proceed with starting to wire some more of the the main power wires that is the main negative and this is the uh, will be the main positive and I'll have to have a power wire uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do I do with the power wire. I don't really want it to run across here I'm not sure I might I don't know if I'll droop it down and bring it across here or maybe I'll bring it up here and out over to here but um, that is the main positive and that is the main negative and uh, now we continue so uh, this is kind of my stopping point for the evening I uh, have my main power positive going over there don't love that it's sort of running along the top of the battery but it's not it's not anywhere near any terminals and then it goes through a hole that I cut in that in that board and then it runs up to the uh, the main switch up there um, and that'll be the main power breaker and then I have the meter up at the top there and then I have the solar charge controller over there and my inverter over there plugs off the inverters for easier access that's the shunt for the meter over there and uh, you know um, we're starting to get everything laid out I'm trying to reuse as many of the wires as I can um, kind of why um, this red wire was already made so kind of just trying to make it uh, fit and work with what I've already made so but I'm happy with that I want to be able to at a, at a, I don't want to have to reach down to the floor to throw breakers I want to be standing up to throw the main power and then I'll put the solar one here and have a meter there to watch what's happening um, so so far I'm pretty happy with uh, the placement and everything laying out and um, let me step back a little bit and you can just sort of see the layout there the batteries are all nicely on the shelf there and then the only thing there is some electronics and it should be all pretty contained right on that corner and uh, that'll free up this whole space here where that that rack used to sit and used to sort of interrupt my flow as I walked around the car so so far so good so the wiring is coming along pretty well. Um, unfortunately, I ran out of um, 12 gauge uh, landscaping wire, uh, this stuff here that I use for the solar connections. Um, so I had to run over to Home Depot and grab some. Um, but, you know, that's the nice thing about using something like landscaping wire. It's in stock anywhere and it's pure copper and it has a uh, indestructible like shell on it, which I like because you know my my solar wire I actually run it across my garage floor to the uh, to the uh, port where the where the solar comes into my garage so it's nice to have some sort of like kind of indestructible wire laying across the garage floor here but um, anyways um, time to continue wiring I just got to pretty much make the uh, solar connections to the solar charge controller right there and uh, run it back through that that breaker over there but uh, we're about done with all the wiring Okay, so everything is rewired and uh, it is working. That is our uh, that is the incoming solar. It goes up, and then uh, the positive part of that solar line goes through that breaker, and then down, and into the PV input on the solar charge controller. That's the uh, PV out from the solar co charge controller going to the battery, and the negative leg goes down into the shunt, and the positive leg actually goes onto the positive leg of the inverter um, which I'm kind of using like a bus bar and then that positive will return to the battery to charge the battery from the solar so that's the uh, the solar and um, uh, yeah and then that you know I've got the meter up there and uh, this is the main breaker here battery is on everything's up 26.6 .6 volts and that is the solar breaker 
and there is 260 watts flowing in right right now let's take you closer uh, yeah nearly 300 watts coming in right now um, but the battery is close to it's close to full 27 volts is pretty full on a lipo 4 that's settled um, yeah so that's it and then uh, that'll be that's where I plug in the you know plug in my uh, 110 volt appliances and then one more look at the uh, let me lower you down here one more look at the uh, the battery is all built here and there's our positive and negative legs they go through that baseboard over to this wall and uh, there's the BMS and the fuse and all the balance leads so yeah everything is uh, wired up and good to go and uh, I decided not to install the 12 volt circuitry from the uh, previous rack just because I don't really use 12 volt circuitry for anything so I'm um, gonna for now just to simplify all the wiring and keep it clean I'm gonna leave the 12 volt circuits off but uh, yeah I think we're good to go for now